Hey guys, how's it going? Joey here, back in support commentary. Today I'm going to be playing some Samir Rel. Samir Rel is one of the biggest noob stomp combos that you can actually play in the game. Um, you can carry games really, really well, and if you have a duo queue, I highly recommend trying out this bot lane if you guys both play these champions. Or you can substitute Nod uh, Rel with any melee support, like Nautilus or Leona. I just think it's easiest to continuously force with um, Rel. So we're going to go for this. We did lose our flash on our Samira in the level one, which sucks. And something to note is we are probably not going to look to fight too early unless they step super out of line here, which they probably won't. We're just going to AFK, kind of chill, just vibe out realistically until uh, level three. We're going to change forms to prevent ourselves from taking too much damage. Of course, Soraka have a lot of fun bullying you in early game. That is kind of how champions like Alistar and Vel work. Like she will win the level one. That's okay. I'm taking a little bit more damage than I would have liked to take, but that's fine. A poor spacing from me. But I'm just talking. Isn't too bad. We will get our all in off at level two. Honestly, it might be an all in onto the Soraka. This exact matchup. Especially if she keeps playing like this. So a couple things we're going to look for before we want to take our all in. We ideally want there to be no silence on the Soraka. We want her to waste that as a poke ability. Um, that's going to be a bit of a trigger for us that we want to go in. We want there to be a smaller wave uh, for us to fight on. And ideally we want level 3. If we're not level 3, it's okay. But ideally you want to be level 3 in this matchup. Okay, well this guy really messed up his positioning. So that's fine. We traded flashes with a very positive HP. Trade. Yep. You can get in there, buddy. That's on you. Okay, well, he's a bit of a slow on him from red buff, so he'll get the kill. Good enough for us. So she didn't flash the initial combo here, so it's actually going to mean that she dies. She could have flashed at any point there earlier and she would have not died, but she flashes at the end and still dies with you losing her flash. So now we're perfectly set up as we do in early game for us to just win the game, basically. Um, <laughs> even our Master Yi is saying it. When you get ahead in a matchup like this, it does become very, very snowball -y. That is why we took the Glacial Augment over, 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 uh, over taking something like we would traditionally take in... Um, Aftershock, because we are going to, once we trade flashes with them, if we have the slow to run them down, it just makes it so much more easier and easier to create snowballs for AD carry to actually kill our opponents. Um, small thing that I do when I play certain melees, especially with stuff like Draven, really getting a nice stomp off in, in matches where you should just be winning and you don't really need Aftershock healing anyway. So we're going to wait for them to push into us here, and we're probably going to kill them on our next Ignite timer. Um, the nice thing to think about as well is I have Cosmic Insight. The Aphelios does not have Cosmic Insight. So when my flash is up, I will have about a 40 minute window, 40 minute, 40 second window uh, where I will have flash and he will not actually have flash for that. Oh, wow. Eh. I mean, honestly, we probably shouldn't have been fighting in that anyway, but yeah, that's still my bad. I don't think we're gonna get dove here, but I guess we don't have ignite, so I don't really want to look too aggressively there, and we don't have um our jungler on our side. Oh no. You can just eat to the creeps to get out here. This is my Q there. An enemy has been slain. They call it their own metal. Hmm. Oh, you want to keep going? That's crazy, you know? And if you want the kill, it's fine. I 
I am at some point going to buy Merc Treads this game, but I don't think I'm going to buy it now. I think I'm going to buy this in a bit still, especially with my Flash coming up. So I haven't really bought a lot of tank stats in early game, which isn't great because I don't have Aftershock, so our HP is going to be a little rough. We can stop Shen. We could even dive here. Maybe. Are they reverting Nico? Just that part of Nico. I'm down to dive, honestly. I'm gonna ping this. So we have about 740 is when. No, I thought about Shen, and I thought it would still be fine, but I guess I'm wrong. No flash, I thought we could get on him with Glacial. I guess not, I guess we're too far. You're gonna ward this entire time, buddy, I don't think we're falling for it. Not great for me to take that kill. This guy's no flash. Guy has flash now. Uh, wait, wait, wait. So, so I'm overforcing baiting my team where I'm completely fine and they're dying. So who's the one who's not really understanding affiliate spells? Like, I know I'm not going to die there. I'm just getting a chunk on him. It's fine. But then my team die because they don't understand affiliate spells and it's my fault. But yeah, sure, I guess I... I mean, I don't really know if I'm baiting them, but they are kind of griefing. Can't remember if a fellow is flashing or all in. That biscuit I could have used, maybe. But I think our Master is going to pop off here. Cool. He's going for it. And he's dead. Oh! He's crazy with it. Probably should just ult it earlier. A little slow on the... The slow. Wait, I didn't go Merc Treads. I'm trolling. Wait, I said I was going to go Merc Treads. I literally said it out loud and I'm going fucking Lucidity. I'm actually so stupid. Okay, I'll play Zack. Zack was definitely does get a quadra there, by the way. Champ is so broken. What is wrong with you?
some Budo scripting. Pro player scripting. There's an ulti up again. The Shed, I guess, cannot ult himself, so... Hmm. And there's a Soraki here. Guys, it's pre-12. The tower's gonna one-shot us. We don't need to wait for the tower. We're playing uh, two AoE champions, or at least one AoE champion. <laughs> the tower is not dying that fast. Like, we have three grubs. I'm just gonna get taunted. I'm having to waste my flash. Or use my flash to not die. Which, maybe not worth it. It is really, really important to save your flash in real. I mean, I have two things to reduce my cooldown of it, but... Still not. By the way, new new champ has oh my god. He hit him with his own his own logic. It's over for him. It doesn't even have flash. The ulti to end, sadly. The fat shield. Turret plating will soon fall. First the wave. You play patient. You got the first charm off, you're chilling. What is wrong with people? <laughs> Ask if he has a terminally ill disease because he messed up in a video game. All right. Seems reasonable. What? Average league player, true. It's been hard for my champion to really get an engage off there. So Jr can always just ball you out of your combo really, really easily. He's the best mid laner in the game. It's patch. It's the Yone patch yet. That can build Merc Tread. What the fuck? Oh man, if I had my flash, it'd be so nice. The situation. Sometimes it really feels not that easy to find engages with Rail without flash. Especially when people are like playing well, like... Yeah, of course I'm going to get cancelled by the Syndra combo. Hmm. Not really a point to go on him there. No, he can follow up. 
Can't really win this. Go so. Very close. I don't even know if they had Shadow Shirok ulti, but they did. That was not a win. New players just hate any champion that can't just instantly die to snowball. On gank, apparently. I pressed my snowball into lane and I didn't get a kill. Riot, you are bad at game design. Oh. Hey, buddy. Okay, well, let me just wait for our E. Mm. Got a last second engage off there. Our Nico's not going to be a part of it, though. So we're going to end up 4v5ing this. And winning. Oh, our Xumir messed up her combo. Great job, team. Well played, Rel Masterclass. Thank you, bro. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Okay. Well, at least our E's nice to me. Spear is not nice. Also, yo, people who unmute are mute at the start of the game, then unmute to flame and then remute are turbo cringe, no? Okay, well. Is he insane with it? Ooh, maybe insane with it. They're insane with it. <laughs> what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> Dude, I can't get a game that's another stop, so the next like three uploads, so maybe previous three uploads, depending on the order that these come out, it's just <laughs> me stomping people. So I'm playing in Master trying to climb on my main account because I haven't been active. And like there's some elo to it now. I guess I'm Grandmaster, so woo. <laughs> my lord. Should have honored my Nico. Alright, well, we'll probably put a part two for this one as well. Oh no, I was muted for the start of this. Okay, well, sorry about that. Uh, let's <laughs> let's just recap. I'm probably not going to voice over dub that, but maybe we just started from here. Nah, whatever. We'll just show the early landing. It's fine. Uh, basically, what I was saying is, like, in general, you can go after shotgun this matchup. It's fine, but I wanted to show off uh, this particular uh, game using. Glacial. Uh, you can also go Nimbus Cloak if you want. Nimbus Cloak is pretty decent on Rel uh, with Celerity and using Hex Flash from the bush. Um, but I did go for the uh, Bone Plating and after uh, Overgrowth because this isn't like the hardest winning lane. Um, they do have a lot of kill pressure at 6, so we want to try to get kills before 6. So ideally here, our AD carry is going to bounce the wave for us. Um, if you're in a duo, you want this to happen. You want the wave to come into you. Because the wave is coming into you, it allows you to be able to start forcing. Oh, well. We played for our jungler, our jungler did not play for us. It's fine. It's really, really bad. 
Well, to be honest, I, I particularly kind of ran down our Callista, but we were trying to play for jungle. Somebody flashed there on her. I think it was the Graves and the uh, Vagar, I want to say. Um, so it's fine. We can still look for kills and stuff like that. Obviously, if you get behind, it feels really bad when you're playing like uh, lanes where you should be winning early game. Oh, no. That was really bad for me. But this is the power of Glacial right here, and this is why we are taking Glacial. Um, even though that looked really bad, I kind of entered it, to be completely honest with you, um, because my AD carry got hit by a W. We still have the range to actually kill the guy because of the slow of Glacial, and it just allows for our Callista to be able to catch up and auto-attack him. Although, even if that was a trade of Flash, it would still have been pretty good for us. But we did get the uh, sudden flash there, which is really important because now we can keep forcing onto our actual lane when they push into us again. Key abilities that you kind of want to look out for here uh, when you are looking to force your all in is we want them to not have Vagar Cage and we want them to not have Senna W. If they ever waste one of these abilities, it's a very guaranteed hey, we should look, hey, we should all in. Obviously, they probably won't waste uh, Vagar Cage very often, um, but if they do, they do, you know. guys should die on this as long as our Callista space is pretty well uh, maybe not maybe I was wrong still a fairly good trade for us and the wave is on our side which is what you want so going to push into us we have double refillable potion on our uh, Callista so that's good do you need our jungler to kind of play around bot a little bit more we'll level up here like there's four people bottom and our mid is going to be completely okay just push in his wave and it'll overall be good for us holding the wave here is good we want to keep the wave in front of our tower and the reason is because it allows us all of this lane to kind of run down your opponent Oops. uh is this really a thing i don't think so Anyway, it allows you all this lane to kind of run down your opponent to chase them, if you get on top of them, and stuff like that. Makes it hard for them to see us, they have to worry about ganks and stuff like that, it's not that easy. We're not actually going to kill that, we just pressure them. Um, whereas if you're constantly pushing, you're probably going to be looking more often to look for roams and stuff like that, rather than forcing fights. If I had Celerity, I'd probably max E. I kind of stopped maxing E. Well, I never really liked the E max, but they did nerf E max. Um, like maybe five or six patches ago, and I already was a W maxer, so it didn't really affect me too much, but... The nice thing is when you're playing matchups like this, we're still looking to kind of like deny the Sun of Souls. Like, she can't go for that soul. If she goes for that soul, she has to die. You can see... Like that's just not legal. Their graves just killed Grub, so I think we can maybe even dive here. With Senna giving us re aggro. Or like dropping aggro with ulti. Not Senna Callista. It's like a really, really, really important thing when you are playing versus Senna, though, and playing melees. It's like paying attention to souls that are on the ground. Like the Senna is so greedy, and you want to pressure the souls as much as you can. That is kind of like the win condition for you. Like a very easy force condition for you. So there's no flash, so her stepping up like that was kind of psycho, but it's gonna be okay. Not amazing. Uh, 
But we should be able to kill the Yone here, me and the Kane. I'll be able to get a assist. All right, so we're six now. We're going to look for a force here. We're going to keep watching our eyes on bottom. Um, well, we go and get a little bit of vision. If they hit tower here, they probably should die. They use cage. So this is our all-in. This is our all-in. We have to go. We have to go. So no cage. I'm going to just flash on them here. Oh, get away from me. Ah. Uh. Yeah, the second they use cage, I want to just force a flash because I know that we have summoners, so we can always run them down. Also, I mean, obviously, we have our jungler uh, with us there as well. So using all of that is important to getting a clean force off. Um, we did get both flashes now, and those are timed to our flash. This is something that you can kind of do whenever you're playing any champion that has a uh, flash and you trade flash with your opponent. You can kind of understand, hey, I just used my flash. Their flash is going to be the same cooldown as mine. What's very, very important to note about this, though, is we have cosmic and we also have lucidity boots. So our flash is going to be up 70 seconds before the uh, sun of flash and about 20 seconds before the big R flash. This is super, super important. You can just probably army at them, honestly. Oh, I didn't mean to go into tower there. I should have shorted my W. They usually have died if they had, like jungle or something. So now they don't have flash, very easy for us to just kind of keep abusing them and keep running them down. Wow, that really hits me. That's kind of crazy. Honestly, that's fine. He stopped my reset, but he carry just got a ton of gold from board, so I'm not too sad about it. Oh fuck, I didn't mean to show there. If I didn't show, I could probably have looked for a cheese on this guy. With my Hex Flash. But yeah, we're probably just gonna take our reset here. Look to roam a bit. Second Grubs are spawning, and they're probably going to be a very, very hot contest topic this game. My Gragas is probably dead here. Oh, the Picasso didn't play it that well. There's no flash on both of them, so if we find them with our cane, it's fine. We can always look to give the grubs and force around bottom. If they play smart around it, though, we're not going to get anything. Oh, we saw her. We should go. So it's on a... This guy will die for sure. Uh, one kill is really not worth it, though, for grubs in this situation, I don't think. Six grubs is so powerful. Um, yes, we're going to be able to hit tower, but they're going to be doing the same on top, because they killed our top laner before. Two kills, though! I'll kind of take that. So now it's very hard for the Vagar to step up unless he's dumb. I mean, at lower elos, you might be able to cheese bot and stuff like that. And higher elos, this Vagar should understand that I'm always in that bush and I'm always looking to cheese him. So we do the opposite. It's kind of like getting in the head of your opponents, understanding what they have to think and what your opponents think. This uh, Yone is probably thinking, hey, this guy's here. I mean, you should never be warding on this timer just because of what's happening on the map. But he is like conscious that, hey, this Vagar is probably getting zoned off bottom. They're probably going to play for bot tower. That should be their goal. Um, and then just being around mid to kind of punish him on the timer. When you play support, you should just always try to be in the head of the enemy carries and then kind of think about what they're thinking about. That way you can kind of deny them, look to punish and stuff like that. Let's see what's teleport. Callista's not moving. We have about... Mm. Doesn't look like we're going to get the force off here. When you go a glacial, though, by the way, you have to go celestial opposition. It is not worth it to go for blood song in this situation because you are going to be so squishy. I want to make sure we kill the wards behind us rather than clearing their forward vision. 
uh, just so we don't get TP on by Casio. So we picked our flash at uh, 13, 14. That's when it first came up. So we know 70 seconds from now, the uh, Senna is still not going to have flash and we are going to have flash advantage. We're not going to be able to find the force in this situation, mostly because we're going to start looking on the enemy jungler. We went a little too early, but if he can solo kill him, it's fine. Yeah, he didn't solo kill him. So it's not fine. If we just wait for me there, he's going to walk into a situation where I can actually just get my CC off for free. The fog this guy needs to die for what's it calling forward. I'm trying to give the kill to my AD carry here when it looks kind of free. Yeah, it would have been nice for Arcane to kind of wait for us in that situation, rather than just going immediately. Um, maybe I could just reach a flash, but I want to save my flash for longer. Okay, well played. This is going to end up having to be like us and bot lane carrying with jungle maybe, but our champs are not very good into their champs. Callista has a very hard time versus like all four of their champions. Like all, literally all five of their champs, honestly. Kane will be good though. Kane can probably one shot basically everyone on the end of the team with items. We have, like, not really great wobble combo if I land a good ulti, which sucks. I hate that. There's certain games when you play this champ where it's like, damn, I land everything and we just have no follow-up damage because the champs that we have on our team. So I'm playing downside there uh, with the intention of trying to bait the Vagar to feel safer on top side. Um, letting him step up and playing down so that Arcane can kind of get on top of them. There's so many little things like that that you can think about support that I think a lot of people don't really realize how they can create like more winning advantages. There's more to playing the game than what's on your screen. There's also playing like what the enemy team's thinking and what's on the enemy screen and like manipulating their thought processes so that it creates the winning situations for you. This is obviously a very big part of support as your role does play around vision and vision denial and creating vision pockets. All these things really apply. I'm gonna ignite this guy so that he can't get a reset off here. Combo him. And we're gonna go reset immediately from the bush. Because our job is over there. We stopped the reset. That's all we really wanted to do. And then we're gonna get back fast into bot side. I probably should have bought maybe this earlier. But I have been building Deadman's Plate on uh, Rail, but I decided to go for luck in this game. They have a lot of AoE and stuff like that. Support itemization is something that can definitely change from game to game. Uh, all the items are pretty similar in what they do in terms of like gold effectiveness and stuff like that. You should hold me. Fuck. Not bad. Shit, we're getting in there. Saving my combo here for two seconds when I have. This is nothing. I'm gonna burn down a little bit here. Wow, that was a lot of burn downing. Can't believe I missed that. Uh, Callisto ulti. Yeah, support itemization is something that definitely changes from game to game. I wouldn't build the same item all the time on support. Um, I think understanding how itemization works is really important. 
um, and how you can create more winning advantages through itemization. But I mean, everything is pretty similar, so it's not like the most game changing thing sometimes. Like, Lockett will definitely be good this game, but I'm not gonna like solo win the game because I built Lockett instead of Dead Man's, you know? Let's see, let's see. I survived the academy. Or Callisti. I'll push forward. I'm pretty sure there's some boards here though, so we can't really push forward. Trust is a luxury no one can afford. Okay, did use their cleanse there. Uh, there's no E, but we're hitting bot tower for free. So they're basically a four grouped here to get control onto top side. Meanwhile, our Silas is going to free hit bottom with E. They might go for a Baron hit here, and we don't have any blue trinkets, which is very, very depressing. Uh, we do have Kane invisibility, which is great, but I'm going to just run in here. The face check. Okay, well, we survived with our Charismai. It's great. We need to get people here, though. I'm gonna go from top side. Please, TP, buddy. I'm gonna ignite that guy just to make sure he dies. Combo, really well played from our Gragas to start that up. They kind of forced themselves into doing that and. Like, I don't think forcing yourselves into Baron situations when enemy team has, like, really good AoE champions and we have a good smite is really the best play for them. Um, I mean, I guess maybe they thought the game was in, like, that bad of a state. But, you know, maybe if they had killed Arcane, it would have been better. But even then, if they killed Arcane, like, I don't think Arcane really did that much in the fight. I mean, he did create a force on the right side, which allowed me and the Gregs to get really good angle. So I guess he did do a lot. I take it back. Cool. I mean, ideally, we're setting up on top side. We're just playing for this dragon, which is really just useless, by the way. It's a 21 minute cloud dragon. Ideally, we're playing for top towers and stuff like that, but that's okay. I missed my hex flash from where I wanted it. But that guy's dead. Oh my god, I'm missing everything. I think our uh, Greg is just turbo popped off there on the side. I didn't really fully see because I was focused on myself, but I'm pretty sure he just popped off. Although not a very good fight for us. I mean, the fact that we didn't get wiped there is pretty good because I messed up my combo. We used all of our damage on the Senna. Um, I already carry was dead. So nice to not lose the game there, but... You're definitely not the fight that you want with your Baron buff. I actually with Baron, you generally don't want to fight. You just kind of want to use your minions and waves. Great advantages. Like if you get a fight off, it's sometimes good, but it has to be like a really great situation. Because now we're not going to be able to break towers and stuff like that with our Baron. I mean, it is nice that you get the bonus stats and stuff like that from Baron. But they're just stats. Really lead to like map control. Like 4080, 48p. I mean, there's a lot of gold efficiency. There you go, putting you do a Baron buff. We 
We do have a Callista ulti. When you have Callista ulti, your engage range just increases so much because there's so many angles that you can look at that are like fine. Like you're, even if you mess up or int, it's like, oh, I have this, so. Do that guy or do that guy and run away. I love my Callista's build this game. You like realize like what the enemy team comp is and just like built uh, built full fucking tank. Hey, I have my blade. I'm just as strong as I need to be damage wise. This game and you just became the second most tanky champion in our team. I just want to be there because like I all in. This guy's dead if he all ins our Callista. Callista does win those. This would have been a great setup if we still had our Baron buff, but since we don't, it does make it a little bit hard for us to actually break the towers because they have decent enough wave clear. Of course, we will eventually whittle them down and we do get that one. Oh no. That's a little scammy, I'm not going to lie. Not a super big fan of whatever our Callista just did there, but... This might turn into something here. It's because of our Kane's angle. Should probably look now. Yo. I need a W out. I need to wait for my real W. My good W, not this one. This one's a very bad W at this point in the game. Really great combo. Oh, not that good apparently. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about though. Like I get an amazing combo and our teammates don't have that much AOE wombo combo to follow up into it. I land a nice three man on a couple of carries there, but no one's really in range for my team to hit. So it's maybe not that good of an engage. I just have like Gragas there. Doesn't like one shot people. She doesn't have E, she used it already. This guy's gonna die though. I do need to try this Senna build, because a lot of people have been building it. And it's pretty popular. I still like the rapid fire cannon build, but I do I do need to try it. I mean, I just don't think Aerie's that good in like lane and stuff like that for her. I, I don't know. I'm curious for my Senna players, which Senna build you guys like the most right now? The hybrid, Black Cleaver, Enchanter, Black Cleaver or Enchanter. And anyone who says Lethality, I'm sorry. You're just wrong. I mean, Lethality is good at countering Enchanters, especially like Shield Comps. So I'll have a video about that, I think, maybe tomorrow, um, about how you can play Enchanter, or set it to counter Enchanters, especially stuff like Seraphine and AoE Healers, where you can just rush a uh, Serpent's Fang or Healing Cut and stuff like that. It feels really good for Senna, because Senna has a winning lane versus almost every Enchanter. So yeah, if you're looking forward to that, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate it, guys, who do... Um, Watch the videos, do comment. Those bring me some dopamine. I love getting the free little assist when you just pop the E on somebody from like a mile away. And it's like, nice, I helped. Having an ability like that feels good because like sometimes you're playing a champion and the only way you can get an assist is like by damaging them. And then you're just like, I don't want to steal your kill because this guy's dead, but I want my scoreline to look nice. So. I should probably tank this. Uh, maybe I'm not tanking this when the Graves is still alive and I can look for turn. But basically, one of me of the engage one of either me or the other engaged champion should be holding this angle. So the Gragas is holding it, so I don't have to. If Gragas was on the Baron, then I probably would have traded spots with the Gragas, and then I'm the one looking to zone the Graves more actively. Fruit. Okay, again, we don't want to look to force anything too aggressive here, especially with Kane on reset. We can just play a little bit around our waves. You might get all in. You're fine. And using the cannons just kind of create advantages and stuff like that. We don't have great dive. 
their towers without flash, especially for me. This most likely more than not is going to end up being... What are you buying? You already have so much tank. Brigadier is either warded here or there's somebody in the bush. I don't know what I need to do here. I'm smokescreened. Okay. I figured it was not engage, but I wasn't entirely sure. Because, yeah, we have these waves. Like, if they mess up their engage and stuff like that, like, now we're hitting top tower. Now we're hitting bot tower. Like, this is the power of Baron, where you just use your creeps to kind of win the game for you and do things for you. These creeps are too hard to kill with Baron buff, especially post 25 minutes. Uh, I think it is. Maybe it's 24 minutes where uh, you get a cannon wave every single lane before then baron buff doesn't really feel like the most op thing in the world but like after you get the cannon for every single wave i swear baron is like so insanely broken and creeps are obviously hard to kill in the early parts of the game oh probably one for one in here i'm not and change forms here I see there's no R, by the way. Oh, I don't know if that one for one is OP. Nice. All right, well, there's a much more clean showing. I don't know if I'm going to have time to go for a part three on this video. So if you guys did enjoy the video and want me to play different champions, let me know. Hope you guys did enjoy. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye, gamers.